What's happening gamers, it's Kaywin here and welcome back to another Retro Monday, where my goal in life is to turn your Monday into a fun day. Now some of you may recall that Total Biscuit and I took a quick look at this game for the Game Station series, This Is Why We Can't Have Nice Things. Yeah, TV does that so much better than me. Anyway, during that show I promised a review and, uh, well, here it is on Valentine's Day! Score! Now, much like Derek, or the Happy Video Game Nerd, I too actually owned this game and loved it growing up as well. Metal Storm was a side-scrolling platforming game developed by iRim, which released in the US in 1991 and then in 92 for Japan under the name Gravity Armor. Now, the story was absent for Western gamers, but thanks to Japan, here's a bit of the backstory. The year is AD 3521. Mankind is now in space and changed the planet Pluto into a space station. The planet has been equipped with a planet-destroying gun. Sounds like the Death Star. One day, communication fell silent and Neptune was destroyed by the planet. And the Giga Death next targets the Earth. So the Federation sends in the Storm Gunner M308 to restore order or remove the threat entirely. Now all you need to know about this classic game is it's robots in space blowing stuff up! Metal Storm's major claim to fame is the fake parallax scrolling and switching M308's gravity. Yes, I said fake because NES games weren't capable of utilizing that technology. But the programmers trick you by literally redrawing the tiles every frame to mimic animation and give that sense of depth to the game. Actually, it's pretty ingenious if you think about it. Now, the gravity feature was revolutionary for its day. In fact, certain puzzles could only be solved by switching the gravity. A few games later on would use some gravity puzzles, but as far as I know, Metal Storm is the only one to structure an entire game around this concept. Pretty cool. Examples of later games to feature this, and I'm not including all of them, just the ones that are the most famous, would be Mega Man 5 and Super Mario Galaxy. The gameplay actually combines platforming with shooter elements. Metal Storm features seven intense levels, and at the end of each, you face a boss. As the game begins, right away players notice two things off. One, your mecha has no life bar, meaning if you take a hit, kaboom, instant death. And two, the levels are timed, except for the boss fights. So basically, if you get lost in this game and time's up, well, ba-boom. Controls were excellent for this game, and any death you encountered came by your own screw-ups. The game puts you in full control of M308's ability to shift the gravity. This was done by jumping and pressing up or down on the gamepad, so you could stick to the ceiling or the ground. Aside from your standard energy rifle, Storm Gunner can use one of four power-ups. These included a shield, which can be moved in four directions to defend against bullets and kill enemies too, the power beam, which changes your small shots into a wave-like attack, the G-power up, which increases your force of gravity, I think, and lastly we have the armor power up, which adds an extra hit to your machine. I'm not gonna lie to you, this game is uber hard, but don't worry, once you die, and you will, a lot, the developers were kind enough to give you unlimited continues and a password system too. So, what didn't I like about this game? Well, in terms of things that just bugged me, and again, this is just minor gripes, I had a few complaints. For starters, I can't stand how enemies could respawn literally within seconds of blowing them up. As a kid, this game made me kind of motion sick too, especially on this level. The bosses actually ranged from very cheap and easy to downright wicked evil. The boss fights that I couldn't stand the most had to do with this boss and the second to last boss. You know the one I'm talking about, the one with the R-Type cameo in it. That stage was just so abusive to the player. Seriously! Back when Total Biscuit and I were discussing this game in the last year, he was surprised that the stage layout, doors, and other things could kill you instantly just by touching them. He called this game merciless, and to some degree I agree with him. Even after you understand how to navigate these deadly levels, it's no stroll in space, I can assure you. This is one of those games where trial and error will become either your best friend or your worst enemy, depending on your memory skills. Still, my biggest concern over this game is four things. Number one, most of the power-ups are just worthless. 
Number two, getting a high score is pointless, unless it's done for bragging rights on the playground. I mean, this made me really mad as a kid because it unlocked nothing, no secret ending, and no special weapon. Number three, the power-ups are limited to one at a time. And being limited to only one power, it just got on my nerves tremendously, especially on expert mode. And lastly, this game has no super move, like a bomb attack to wipe out all the enemies on the screen. This really surprised me, considering this game was made by the same company that gave us our time. Alrighty, with my mini rant aside, onto the stuff that I loved about this game. The design for this game was just incredible to look at. Hyrium really pushed this game to its hardware limitations, and you can see it. Each level really stands out, the colors were so vibrant and bright, the detail was incredible, plus the character sprites and explosions were top-notch stuff, gamers. Bursting into flames never looks so good. Musically, this game continues moving along the awesome train. The tunes were just so blasted catchy, and it captured the atmosphere of this game beautifully! As far as I know, the composition was done by Mr. Taro Watanabe, and it was his only video game soundtrack that I'm aware of. Controls were excellent for this game, and kept with Nintendo's old-school standards of excellence. Metal Storm, at its core, is just a fun and challenging game to play. And even though I totally failed at it, today and now, I still found a lot of enjoyment from this title as a kid. This is probably due to my love of robots and mecha in general. I love anything robot related, since I grew up watching Transformers, Voltron, and Robotech in the 80s. As I mentioned before, most of the power-ups in this game are pointless, except for two, which made this game even better. The armor power-up and the shield, baby, yeah! Honestly, the first time I played this game, I made Metal Storm out to be much harder than it actually was. But hey, I was 8 at the time, cut me some slack, Jack! The armor added two hits to your hero, and that was sweet. What's great about this is the power-up appears more often in the stage than some of the other powers. It's also the only power in this game that you can mix with another power-up. Finally, we come to my pride and joy about this game, the shield power-up. The moment you got shot and you had the shield, you noticed that bullets just vaporized and you didn't die. Now boss battles were so much easier and even a few bosses can be annihilated with just using the shield. Still, with all the epicness this game had to offer, its biggest flaw came down to when the game was released. You see gamers, 1991 was a bad year to release any NES game by a third party developer. Sure, Nintendo Power featured the game on its cover, had a full-blown article and even a help section for the game, but it wasn't enough. Then again, back then, not many February release games did that well anyway. But by August of that year, the Super Nintendo would be the death of Metal Storm and many other NES games. The reason NES sales suffered in 91 was the Super Nintendo's launch lineup was amazing, and to date, I can't think of any video game system that has topped the lineup that we saw that year. Massive hits released like Act Razor, Final Fantasy II, Final Fight, F Zero, Gradius III, Pilot Wings, Sim City, Super Castlevania, Super Ghosts and Ghouls, Super Mario World, and of course the UN Squadron. Any one of those games was enough to be a system seller, but all those games in one year? Forget about it! Metal Storm and other games just became unknown and faded in obscurity, and it's a dire shame. In 2006, with the release of the Wii, I was hoping with Nintendo's Virtual Console that Nintendo would actually release games that I played growing up, instead of the big budget titles that we've seen. And come 2011, releases are even more limited now to just Capcom and Konami games, and Metal Storm is nowhere to be found. What makes matters worse is this game is so rare that when you hit this game up on Amazon and eBay and Craigslist, the prices are just... Not cool. However, I'm still hopeful that if Capcom, Konami, Hudson Soft, Square Enix, and others can remake or reimagine their classic NES and Super Nintendo games for WiiWare, PlayStation Network, and Xbox Live, why can't iRim do the same thing now? Digital downloadable games have really expanded the market the last two years, and this game or its sequel would fit perfectly in that category. So in conclusion, I think that this game is amazing and a must play. 
Sure, some of you will probably get your butt kicked, but that's all part of the learning process. I can't recommend this game enough, though. It's a great game, and there's a lot of reason why you should play it. It's fun, it's very challenging, you just can't put this game down once you start playing it. So you older gamers, if you remember this game, great. If you've never heard of it, trust me, pick up a copy today. For you younger gamers, guys and gals, you like anime, robots, or great retro games, then make sure you play this game too. Metal Storm is a very rare game to find and a bit expensive as I've said. So make sure you shop smart. Shop as smart. Sorry, Army of Darkness quote that really didn't fit, but I wanted to say it. You know what I mean. Well, that wraps up another episode of Retro Mondays, making retro and Mondays fun again. Unless the show is on a scheduled break, which sometimes that's going to happen. In any case, thanks so much for taking the time to watch, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Well, until we meet again, gamers, God bless and happy gaming.